Hello and welcome to Amethyst Star Crafting. My name is Jane Ormark and I'm a UK independent stamping up demonstrator. And we are now on the second project of our gift ideas for Christmas um, or gift ideas for any time of year. And today we're going to make a little pencil box. So it's got the do something created every day. Um, I did this with books on because I thought it would be quite fun, which was from the... Um, Oh, the Halloween papers and it's got a little magnetic closure on here opens up and you've got a really lovely pencil box inside now the great thing for this is that I thought as gifts for Christmas which would be quite nice would be our um, watercolor pencils I absolutely love our watercolor pencils and I use them all the time now if you um, I've obviously put them in a case but you don't really want to give them as a gift like that and the packaging is uh, um, is not the nicest really however you can fit and these are the two packs so these are both the packs because there are um, two packs of pencils so you could get one or two and you can see that you can get both packs of the pencils inside there with some room and um, and it closes up like that and would make an absolutely lovely gift for Christmas so let's uh, um, let's get on with making it I'm going to make it this time with um, I'm choosing the um, whisper white because it's easier to see for scoring and I'm choosing the brightly gleaming paper because I thought that that would be quite fun as well. I've got quite a few pencil boxes to make for Christmas ideas for um, for men um, or for boys. So you can use our lovely um, pencils or you can just buy some, uh, um, some cheaper pencils, however you want to do it. So you need a piece which is, let me make sure that I'm in view. Yes, I am. So we need a piece of cardstock which measures 11 and a quarter inches by 8 inches. So you just need to take a little piece of a standard piece of cardstock and you've got 8 inches on the short side and you've got 11 and a quarter on the long side. Then with our scoreboard you are going to score it on the 11 and a quarter inches at half an inch. Now, I've already scored these, so I'm just going down on here for you. Half an inch, two inches. Then you're going to rotate it, and you're going to do half an inch and two inches on the other side. Okay, so you've got half an inch and two inches scored on both sides. Then we're going to take it to the short side. And we are going to score it at um, one and one and a half inches. So on the short side, one and one and a half inches. Let me do it on this way. I've done it through on the wrong way. Right, that's better. So on the short side, we're going to score it at one and a half inches. We're going to score it at three inches. We're going to score it at four and a half inches. We're going to score it at six inches. And we're going to score it at seven and a quarter inches. OK, so that's the scoring on all sides. I will put the link down below to my blog and all the measurements will be on there. So don't sort of panic if you haven't got them all written down now. So that's all we need from our scoreboard. So I can now put that one away. And we are then going to fold on all of those score lines. And burnish. Let me just get my foam folder, which I always have on the other thing. I always forget something, but that's part of my crafting, isn't it? So, okay, so we're just going to score it, uh, sorry, burnish it through on each one of those score lines. Now, I've used heavy um, Whisper White cardstock for this um, because I want it to be quite sturdy. 
although in reality it is quite a sturdy box because you've got um, an extra sort of piece on the closure um, and on the sides that allow it to uh, um, to be quite sturdy so let's just get this piece scored on here there we are burnish on that one then on these ones as well and on that one And then on the other side, which is your half an inch and your two inches. It folds really beautifully and neatly. Um, and as I say, it's a good size. So it will mean that you can fit all of the two packs if you wanted to. OK, so if we look at it on the side where you've got the smaller score line, so you've got a smaller um, rectangle, and then you've got the um, the four other rectangles on there. What we are going to do is we are going to, with our paper snips, we are going to cut up the first three of here. So one, two, three. We're going to cut up here. So take our paper snips. I'm actually going to use some larger ones because it's easier to cut on here. So we're just going to cut right the way up the first three. So the little one to the bigger one and the other one to there. And then we're going to take that one off completely because we don't need that. So again, I try and do it inside the score line. So that's that one. And then we're going to do exactly the same on the other side. So one, two, three, cut up it on here. And then cut this one off on this side. that bit a little bit more there we go okay so it looks like that at the moment then on these pieces down on the side we are just going to cut these ones straight up so and then on the other side we're going to do exactly the same Then these are going to be the pieces that we're going to have as the closures. So on the, so these two centre pieces, like that. So the ones either side, we are going to cut them down just below, and you can cut them down just sort of a little wedge like that. that side and on that side and on that side okay so we've then got those pieces out of the way okay so then we need to um, we're going to fold it first and then we're going to stick the pieces on because it's actually easier to do that so we need to Take this piece down on here. So the piece that we've got over on there, that's the piece that we are going to just glue straight down. So this piece, which is the flap, we can glue that straight away because that just gives us some extra strength. Because we're going to be putting quite a few pencils in here, we want the box to be as strong as we can get it. So I'm using wet glue. You can use tear and tape, double-sided tape, um, Anything that's strong, um, as you know, wet glue is my favourite, so I always use that for everything. And this piece we are going to fold straight back on itself like that. 
and then we can take our bone folder now it will take just a few seconds to glue down so just have a little bit of patience on there and use your bone folder to help glue it down or to help secure it until it goes off and then you've got your top bit on there okay then we are going to take these pieces here and they are going to go in on this side and on that side now we can take just a little tiny wedge which we haven't done so we're going to take a tiny wedge off of this side and it is literally just a sliver it helps with the closing of the box so just by doing a tiny sliver on those pieces it helps and you can see they really are a tiny sliver because we want to keep as much strength of the box as we can so literally just a little sliver and a little sliver what we're really doing is we're just removing where the score line was so then it will just go in just a little bit more neatly so just a tiny little sliver off of there and while we're at it we'll do the other side as well so just a little sliver off of that piece and then off this piece you can see on this piece where the score line was um, we've got just a little ridge on there so if we take that out it just means that it will close a little bit neater okay so we've got all those tiny little pieces and you can see they are literally just a sliver um, that sort of much of a sliver so let's take these pieces out of the way so we haven't got them cluttering up our work surface okay so now we can take these two pieces and they are going to glue across like this so we need to glue them on these pieces and then we need to glue those on those pieces so we can take our i'm using wet glue as i say you can use tear and tape um, or anything else that you want to do I tend to just do two at a time so I don't sort of get glue everywhere but because I'm doing this for the video I will glue all four of them at the same time and with your gluing just make sure that you're right up to those seam lines so those are the pieces that are going to be um, you want them to adhere nicely so always sort of make sure that you've glued those bits on Oops. without gluing it over the other side which I hope I haven't done too much okay so now we are going to take this piece and literally just make sure that it is squared up on that side and the other piece as well squared up on that side and just hold it in position just for a minute then on this little tiny flat piece that we've still got over you are going to I'm trying to do this so that you can see it let's bend that back a bit so that tiny little flat piece here we're going to put some glue on that and again that gives you just a little bit of strength I can get some glue out so that gives you just a little bit of strength and that we're going to fold in so we're going to fold that in and then just hold that quite securely and again that gives that edge just a little bit of extra stability so I'm going to use my bone folder in on here because getting glue to go off if you use your bone folder it helps it to uh, um, to just here so just keeping it until it's nicely adhered on there okay then we're going to go to the other side and do exactly the same thing so make sure that our seam line is as straight as possible up on there and hold that in for a second exactly the same on the other side make sure that seam line is as straight as you can get it 
and hold that in. And then on this little flat piece again, we're just going to add a little bit of glue. Now, if you want to try and um, take a tiny little wedge out of that, you can do. Um, but to have it as neat as you can possibly get it, um, you don't really need to take it unless you find it's catching. If you cut it as straight as you can, it normally doesn't catch and you can just fold it in because what you want is for it to be as tight as you can get it in on there because then that holds it and again just with your bone folder just make sure that it's adhered nicely on there because that as I say gives you a nice extra just little bit of um, stability on those corners so you can take the weight of two packs of pencils quite easily okay and then this piece comes over the top and is going to just go down on here and uh, um, and fasten just nicely with some... Uh, um, you can do it with Velcro. If you're doing it for young children, I suggest Velcro rather than magnets. If you're doing it for older children or, or an adult or somebody, uh, you know, or, or a man for a present, then you can do it with the other. So let's get on with the, um, the decoration. We need... Um, says me I've cut all the pieces down so we need let's get all of those pieces down so we can do them at the same time all right we need five pieces which are going to measure seven inches by one and a quarter inches that gives you a quarter of an inch border if you want an eighth of an inch border then do it um an eighth of an inch um, but it's a fairly easy measurement and as I say I'm using the lovely brightly gleaming because I wanted the copper side of this because I really like the stars on this so we're just going to add some glue to this and we're going to put this on the top first. And because it's fairly sturdy, you can do it afterwards. And with wet glue, it allows you to just sort of shuffle it in a bit. So that's the top piece. If you're doing a patterned paper, then if you cut it down and then do it as you're going, um, you'll be able to um, make sure that the pattern lines up. Um, so, for example, on this one, I don't know whether you can see from this bit to that bit, the paper actually lined up from one to the other because I cut it all off of the same strip. So if you want the pattern to match up, then um, cut it all off of the same strip and then put it down in the same strip and make sure you'll have some pieces facing one way and some pieces facing the other way, which is why I said it's easier to do it once you've put the box together rather than trying to do it um, when it's not. Okay, so this piece at the bottom, again, is going to be your seven inches by one and a quarter. So we can put that one on there. Okay, then we'll go on to the other side here. That's why we need five pieces, because we're going to do all four sides and then we're going to do the piece in the center um, if you're short of cardstock or, or pattern paper then you can always leave the bottom piece blank um, but i quite like it to um, to be all sort of uniform i think it looks a bit prettier so we're going to put this one on here And again, you can do it in coloured cardstock if you want. I've done it in the white purely because it's easier to see. So, and we've got another one to go in on the bottom. On here. I can turn it around that way. But as I say, I love I love making um, ideas and things, particularly for it's 
quite difficult sometimes to get good ideas for men and as I say you can you can fill this with really nice pens and things like that if you wanted to for children you can make it in sort of more pattern paper and fill it with uh, um, with really nice um, or oh, what do you call it um, you know fancy children's children's crayons and 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 coloring things now the last strip is going to go in on the inside piece here because when you open the lid you want the inside to look nice I haven't done the actual bottom part of it because those are going to be filled with our pencils so that part is not going to be seen and obviously the more you use pencils the more they um, will sort of mark things so just by keeping that plain now excuse my head if it's just coming in because I just need to go over the bottom of this box to make sure that I've got this level in here so we've got that piece on there okay now we've got these um, two pieces which are seven inches by an inch because they're going to go onto this piece here so I'm going to put this on first Oh, I've just realised that I've made a bit of a boo-boo. I shall tell you about it in a second. I've put one of the pieces of paper on before I put my magnet. But hey-ho, I shall probably cut another piece and just put it over the top. Okay, so this one is going to go on the outside piece here. So again, just give your quarter of an inch border. So that's why I do like wet glue because you can just slide it about a bit until you've got it exactly where you want it. So that's going to go down on there. Now, this inside piece, what I wanted to do was I've already stuck this piece down. So I'm going to have to cut another piece, but that's all right. Um, I'm using, says me, I have cut those. I'm using some um, magnetic tape. So all I'm, I've done is I've cut that um, just shy of the seven inches because I don't want it to be um, poking out outside of the paper. And it's double sided so it's very easy and all I'm going to do is to stick that, get the stickiness out. I'm just going to stick that in on this top piece here. like that and then I'm going to put the other piece in on top so that it um, it adheres to it nicely and as I say I'm going to have to put another piece over there because I should have put that underneath the paper um, being in a bit of a rush I didn't so um, as I say I always do with magnetic stuff I tend to put that in over the top first so I can get it exactly where I want it, like that. And then the easiest way then is to make sure that your box is straight where you want it and then just close it down, press it down and then you can lift it up and where you've got your piece on here you can put that down. So I am going to cut another piece to just go in over the top like that so it doesn't show. Um, so the other piece, which was seven inches by an inch, is going to go down on here. Once I've got some glue coming out. And as I say, if you're doing Velcro dots, they would be sticking on the outside. Um, but I quite like this, just this magnetic sheet because it's not too strong. Again, if you're using little magnets, just hide them underneath um, the designer series paper. OK, so that's on there. And I just need to cut another piece, which I am going to do. So I want it seven inches by an inch and a half. Bear with me a second while I just cut myself a piece. So seven inches by an inch and a half. So let's do 
inch. So an inch and a quarter. Inch and a quarter by seven inches. There we go. I've just cut myself another piece um, so I can just put that on top. Obviously, you should put your magnet piece on first and then you should put your paper over the top. But um, it's easily rectified. It's one of those things you see me crafting in real time. And, um, you know, we all make we all make little errors from time to time, um, but we can always rectify them most of the time we can. And at the end of the day, it's only paper. So if you make an absolute boo-boo of it, you can always just throw it away and start again. So let's get this piece in. So that's going to go over the top nicely. There we go. Just tear that down nicely. And then that's going to close on there. So you've got it closed nicely and on there perfectly on the uh, um, on the magnetic part good okay so just to finish it off let's make sure that's in on there nicely we are going to put um what i've done is put that out of the way i have taken um from because i thought that would work perfectly I've taken the, one of my favourite stamp sets, Crafting Forever. And there's Do Something Creative Every Day. And I thought that that would be lovely. You could put Crafting Forever Housework whenever if you wanted to and just sort of cut it and move it along. Um, but I do like this one, Do Something Creative Every Day, because it doesn't matter how you then, um, what you put inside, pencils or pens or whatever, and for whatever age. And I've stamped that in the um, copper Delicata ink because it gives that lovely copper finish. Um, this is some retired glimmer paper, but we do do copper foiled um, glimmer um, paper, which is rather nice. And the two shapes, I took the rectangle stitch framelits and I took the second one of the um the sort of longer thinner ones so the second one in from the smallest and in the um stitched ovals it again is the second size up and i've put this in with um just with some dimensional so add some height because glimmer paper is quite difficult to uh, to glue and we are just going to glue that in the center you can finish it off however you want you know if you're doing it for a um a female friend and you've got flowery paper you can put some flowers on the top um you can put with the children's ones you can put any sort of you know little characters and things like that on top however you want to finish it off i just thought that this would be sort of fairly simple and classical and then that will fit just in the center like that so we can put that on there. And the one little bit that we have missed out is on the ends, we need a piece which is one and a quarter inches square, two pieces of those. And we're just going to put those in on the end. And that will be our box finished. So that piece is going to go on the end. And as I say, that is an inch and a quarter by an inch and a quarter so that can go on that end and then that can go in on this end Go. So you've got the lovely paper in on all of the sides, the 
just makes it really really nice and neat on there and then <clears throat> just to show you so these are all the pencils in there and and it makes it very sort of sturdy once they're full of pencils so I'm going to just carefully tip all of these ones out of there so you have in here two packs of the um our watercolor pencils and they will fit really nicely in here so you've got two packs worth which fit absolutely perfectly and then uh, as i say just um, attach it through on there and you've got a lovely a lovely box um, to give to anybody for Christmas time um, or any other time, a birthday present, an anniversary present, something like that. So hope you enjoyed that number two in my series. I will be doing a few, uh, a complete 12. So thank you everybody who subscribed and really liked the series. And um, if you haven't subscribed, do look at subscribing because there's going to be another eight to follow of gift ideas that you can make for Christmas and beyond. So thank you so much for watching me. Do look forward to seeing you again. Bye-bye.